Okay, the last uh, type of factoring we're going to learn is factoring the sum and difference of two cubes. Now, recall, and this would be an example down here where we first learn how to factor the sum of two cubes. Remember, you can't factor the sum of two squares, but as it turns out, you can factor the sum of two cubes. To understand the factoring of the sum of two cubes, let's first go back and recall how we factored the difference of two squares. And that factoring, as you recall, looked like this. You have x plus y times x minus y. Remember, the difference of two squares factors to the product of conjugate binomials. Now, checking that factoring, you'll get x squared for your f of foil minus xy for the i of foil plus xy for the O of foil, and then minus Y squared. And so you get this situation where the O and the I of foil are opposites. So when we consider the sum of, factoring the sum of two cubes, in order for these to be the, if we were to check the factors of those and multiply them together, we would need to have some things departing through being opposites. And so, as it turns out, the pattern for factoring the sum of two, two cubes is actually x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. And what seems a little odd upon first inspection here is that you have a minus in here and there's no subtraction in the sum of two cubes. But you need to have subtraction in the factors because you're going to need to have some opposites that uh, result in terms adding to opposites and thus disappearing. So if I was to show, uh, show how this, these two factors do end up resulting in x cubed plus x cubed, uh, I would see that this is, if I use the claw method where I multiply the x by each term over here and then the y by each term, I would get x cubed minus x squared y plus x squared, I'm sorry, I'm not ready for that term yet, um, plus x y squared, and then starting with the y plus x squared y minus x y squared, and then plus y cubed. So you'll notice that I get these two are opposites, and these two are opposites, and therefore, actually I think I wrote a cubed over here, or a squared instead of a cubed. That should have been a cubed right there. Get the right color. So let's see. Okay, I've got it right there now. So that results in that results in x cubed plus y cubed. And so thus, this is the factoring pattern for x cubed plus y cubed. Now when we look at the pattern for factoring the
So looking at this first example, if I'm factoring a cubed plus 8, um, I'll put the pattern up above here, and then we'll follow it. So remember it would be x plus y for sum of two cubes, and then x squared minus xy plus y squared. So in this case, the a is the x and the, y, and the 8 is the y. Or actually, in this case, a is the x and 2 is the y, because 2 would be the cube root of 8. So we're going to say a plus 2. And x squared is actually 2 squared, which is, I'm sorry, a squared is a squared. And then minus, uh, you've got 2 times a. and then plus y squared, that would, that's where it's going to be 2 squared, which is 4. And so that is the factoring of a cubed plus 8. Now I have another sum of two cubes down below here. A little more complicated because you have a number here. So remember, the a this time would be 3x, and the y would be y, since it's y cubed. So we're still using that same pattern. And so I would have 3x plus y. Now a squared this time would be 9x squared minus 3xy and then plus y squared. And nothing more to do there. Now I have the difference of two cubes in this example. So let's um, write the pattern for the, the difference of two, factoring the difference of two cubes. That would be x minus y times, everything will be positive in the second factor, x squared plus xy plus y squared. And so the b would be the x and the three would be the y this time. So we're going to say b minus 3, and then x squared would be b squared plus 3b, and then plus, remember if y is 3, then y squared is 9. Now looking down below here. Um, I think what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to factor out the negative first. You don't have to do that, but that's what I'm going to recommend. And we'll make it the difference of two cubes. And uh, so I'm going to leave that negative as a factor. Now the cube root of 216 is 6. So I'm going to have x minus 6. And then I'll have x squared, and then uh, plus 6x, and then plus the y squared would be 6 times 6, or 36. And that would be the factoring for negative x cubed plus 216. So in this next one, uh, let's think about... Uh, doing some factoring out greatest common factors first. So I'm looking at this one right here. So in 16 and 54, I have a common factor of 2a squared, it looks like. So let's factor out 2a squared, and that will leave me with 8a cubed minus... 27 b cubed. So I have difference of two cubes inside the parentheses. So I'll continue with this factoring of 2a squared. Then, let me write a better 2 there. And then I will have uh, 2a minus 3b, and then I'll have a squared, which is 4, 
a squared, and then plus xy, which here would be 2a and 3b, so that's going to be 6ab, and then plus y squared in this case, it would be, so that'd be 3b squared or 9b squared. And that would be the factoring there. Let's look down below here. Uh, remember that one thing I'd want you to, re to remember or to know is that any power with a, that's a multiple of 3 would be a perfect cube. So in this case, I'm still working with difference of 2 cubes. So the cube root of x to the 12th is x to the 4th. Cube root of y to the 6th is y squared. And then I have this uh, uh, a squared this time would be x to the eighth. And then plus xy would be, that would be x to the fourth y squared. And then plus y squared would be y to the fourth since y is y squared in this one. And there we have it. Okay, one last, one last problem to look at. This one's going to involve some, some factoring out a common binomial factor, and this time that common binomial factor is x cubed plus y cubed, so I'm going to factor that out first. Now 3 minus z is fully factored, so I just have to factor this generic pattern right here. And that's going to be x plus y. I'm just going to use the pattern here. It will be x squared. Remember, we need a minus sign in here. xy plus y squared times 3 minus z. And that is the end of the lesson.